Hi, I'm Rose and we're here at the Robert Goldshaw Memorial at the beginning of the Black Heritage Trail. So first we're going to talk about what this memorial is. So President Lincoln responded to pressure from um, abolitionists and created the first African American regiment of the U.S. military. And they fought in the Civil War in um, July of 1863. They led an assault on Fort Wagner. and. Um, on Charleston, in Charleston, South Carolina. So Colonel Robert Goldshaw uh, and many of his soldiers were killed. And the flag, they saved the flag from capture. And Carney was awarded a Medal of Honor for his bravery. And he was the first African-American soldier to receive a Medal of Honor in the United States military. So we're here at the second stop on the Black Heritage Trail, which is the George Middleton House. So this house was built in 1787, and George Middleton was one of the original owners. He was a Revolutionary War veteran, and after that he led the Bucks, which was one of the three African-American militias in the Civil War. And um, after it was over, he helped found the Free African Society, which was really instrumental in um, African-American rights in the United States. So we're at the third stop on the Black Heritage Trail. This is the Phillips School. Um, and it was built in 1824, which is on the building. I will get closer in a minute. Um, it was a white only school until 1855 when African American children attended school on the first floor of the meeting house. And then when the Massachusetts legislature uh, outlawed segregated schools in 1855s, the Phillips School became one of Boston's first integrated schools. So this is obviously a very big landmark for um, the education of African American people in the United States. Okay, so we're here at the, third, the fourth, counting is hard, the fourth stop on the Black Heritage Trail. Um, this is the John J. Smith House. So John J. Smith was originally born in Richmond, Virginia. And he moved to Boston in the late 1840s and actually opened a barber shop, which kind of became a, a hub for abolitionist activity. Um, sort of a, a rendezvous point for people who were escaping through the Underground Railroad during the Civil War. Um, so Smith was actually a recruiting officer for all of the African American, for the all African American 5th Cavalry, and he was later elected to represent Massachusetts in the House of Representatives for three terms. And he lived here for um, more than 20 years, so it's a really significant house in his history and in um, the United States. So we're here at the fifth stop on the Black Heritage Trail. This is the Charles Street Meeting House. It was established in 1807 by the Third Baptist Church of Boston. And um, in New England at the time, there was segregated seating in churches. But Timothy Gilbert was an abolitionist and he sort of tested that old tradition by inviting one of his African-American friends to his pew. And um, Gilbert was expelled and joined by other abolitionists, Gilbert founded the first Baptist Free Church, which became Tremont Temple. It's considered to be one of the first integrated churches in America. So after the Civil War, Boston's African-American population increased and the largest of its churches bought this building in 1876. And they established the AME, or the African Methodist Episcopal 
Wall Church and it remained here until 1939 and was the last African-American institution to leave Beacon Hill. So being um, one of the first places that African-Americans and white people could get together and celebrate their religion is obviously a very uh, important historical location. So we're here at the sixth the top of the Black Heritage Trail, which is the Lewis and Harriet Hayden House. So Lewis and his wife Harriet escaped slavery in Lexington, Kentucky, and settled here in 1816. And um, Hayden became a leader of the abolitionist movement, and they even their house became a stop on the Underground Railroad, which is very significant. And they um, kept gunpowder inside of their house and threatened to light it on fire and burn down the surrounding buildings if uh, slave catchers tried to enter their home. And like George Middleton, he was a grandmaster for the Prince Hall Masons and was later elected to the Massachusetts House of Representatives. And he um, recruited for the 54th Regiment, which was of course an all African American regiment in the Civil War. We're here at the John Coburn House, which is the seventh stop on the Black Heritage Trail. So John Coburn lived here from 1811 to 1873. He was a clothing realtor and a community activist. He even served as a treasurer in the New England Freedom Association, which helped uh, African American people to escape slavery. And he was even tried because he helped Shadrock Minkins escape from a Massachusetts courthouse. And he was caught by Boston. So Shadrach Minkins was caught by Boston slave catchers by the, sla by the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850. And um, Coburn was tried and acquitted for uh, helping him escape. And he was later the co-founder and captain of the Masoya Guards, which was an African-American military company and was um, a predecessor to the 54th Regiment, which was one of the first all African American regiments in the US military. Okay, so we're here on Smith Court, which is the eighth stop on the Black Heritage Trail. And um, here there are five different homes that have historical significance to African-American Bostonians. So right here we're num number, in front of number three, and it was owned by James Scott, and his Underground Railroad activity is recorded in the Boston Vigilance community. And he actually aided John Coburn in helping Shadrock Lincolns escape from the courthouse, and he was also arrested, tried, and acquitted. And um, also lived here was William Cooper Nell, who was a community leader, and he was the driving force in the struggle to like integrate Boston schools. And he was the nation's first published um, black historian. So we're here at um, number five, Smith Court, which is the ninth stop on the Black Heritage Trail. And this is the home of George Washington, who was a Labor, and he also served as a deacon for the um, African Meeting House, and he was one of the first uh, African American religious leaders in Boston. Now we're at um, number seven and seven A Smith Court, which is where Joseph Scarlett, who was a chimney sweep and an entrepreneur, lived and owned this building. So he used it as a rental property in the 1860s.
now we're here at um, number 10 Smith Court, which is the place that Scarlett lived. And he, so he lived next to the African Meeting House, which is um, the building that we're at right now. And he owned 15 properties among his, on his death, which is a testament to his hard work and success in business as one of the first African American um, real estate owners in Boston and so the brick apartment houses here on the west end were originally built as wooden houses for waves of European immigrants but those were then torn down so that these four or five story brick apartments could provide dense and inexpensive housings for African Americans and this is one of their first um, communities in Boston. Okay so we're here at the second to last stop on the Black Heritage Trail which is the Abiel Smith School. So Abiel Smith gave money to the city of Boston for the education of African American children and they built this school to honor him in 1835 and it served as African American children's public school until 1855 when the schools were integrated in Boston. And um, it's right next to the African Meeting House so it was definitely important in um, not only educating African Americans, but sort of bringing them to that political center in Boston. So we're here at uh, the last stop of the Black Heritage Trail. And um, this is the African Meeting House. It was built by free black laborers in 1806. And it's considered the oldest surviving African American church in the United States even. And um, so it was sort of the center for religious, social, education, and political activity for all of Boston's free African American people. And William Lloyd Garrison sort of founded the New England Anti-Slavery Society here in 1832. Frederick Douglass spoke here, and it was a recruitment statement station for the 54th Regiment. And so at the end of the 1800s, a Jewish congregation bought the building and it served as a synagogue until 1972 when the um, African American History Museum acquired it and that's why it's a, now it's a historical landmark. But because it was that center in Boston for all the free African American people, it really served an important role in the abolitionist movement.